Video vlog number seven. Seven, that's double O seven. Oh, I was tempted to sing the, uh, one of those James Bond theme songs, but I guess I'll spare you. Uh, my topic today is telepathy and the psychic realm. I choose this topic because people ask me about it often and because it's clear to me that there's a lot of confusion about this topic. This and every other topic I address usually <laughs> seems rather confusing. The subtle realm is often confusing. The nature of telepathy, as I understand it, is that it's hardwired into every one of our brains. The idea here is that every person's brain is wired for telepathy and we are born that way and we are born more or less using it from the get-go. So the idea that some people are psychic and other people are not psychic is just rubbish as far as I can tell, though um, there's certainly a wide range of awareness about the uh, psychic realm. So many people use telepathy without realizing they're doing it. They are sending messages or thoughts or ideas to another person or group of people and they don't realize that those thoughts and ideas are actually received. Um, since most of us are not aware of sending or receiving these messages, uh, we're often very confused about what we've actually been communicating about. And so this is, this is really, perhaps this is a technical distinction between we're not telepathic and we're not aware we're telepathic, but I think it's an important distinction. So that's how I understand it. We are all of us telepathic, but not necessarily aware of it. So, because of this, there is a great deal of confusion about what the rules are, since many people will deny that telepathy even exists. Uh, ironically, they will be using telepathy while they are denying that telepathy exists. I kind of, I kind of snicker at people when they do that. <laughs> What happens when we set about to communicate with people telepathically intentionally? Well, usually we run into a really big mess really quickly because there is so much noise in the psychic realm. Because I have removed a lot of my filters, I'm very aware of the psychic realm. I'm a really sensitive person. I don't have a lot of filters that a lot of people use. So when they say they are able to screen something out, you know, like, um, noise in their neighborhood, for example, that they learn to screen out. Uh, they screen out a whole lot of other things when they screen out something like that. If we want to become more telepathic, well, we can't really become more telepathic, but we can certainly become much more aware of the psychic realm. And the best way to do this is to let go of our filters, to stop recreating and reinforcing filters that screen out a lot of input. It's important to recognize that we have these filters for a reason, that they serve a purpose, that they keep out annoying input, and they keep out input that we don't know how to interpret. And we all do this, and we all have these filters for this reason. We get input that we don't know how to interpret. It tends to throw us in a bit of a turmoil, and we don't like it, so we try to avoid that. However, we remain unaware and ill-informed about things that we continue to avoid simply because we don't really understand them very well. So if you want to remove your filters, you basically make no effort. It's not an effort to remove a filter that I'm suggesting. It's no longer making the effort that is creating the filter, no longer making the effort that is reinforcing the filter. And you can save yourself a lot of chi that you are investing in these filters by simply letting them go. Um, that it's basically a wise notion to bring some awareness to how these filters benefit you and what you're going to do with the consequences of no longer having them and not to rush into this or do anything too quickly. You know, you could kind of just take a filter and sort of, what's it like? Oh, maybe I need that, or maybe I don't need that. Or maybe, you know, not, not just to yank the filter away, but, you know, maybe I can stop investing as much in that filter and start to consider, well, the filter benefits me in this way, 
how can I accomplish that without that filter? How can I manage the situation more skillfully so I don't need all these filters and then I'm more aware, more able to notice more subtle input? And for most people, subtle input is about emotions and telepathy and things that are more subtle than that. So to become more aware of the psychic realm brings us an opportunity to receive more input and to send more input, but I would suggest, or output rather, I would suggest we don't try to send a lot of output into the psychic realm because the psychic realm is so tremendously noisy and it's so overwhelming for people who are engaged at that realm in a way where they have removed a lot of their filters. Um, so to communicate more in that noise is unwise. It's best to find out first what it is you're already communicating in the psychic realm and see if you can scale it back a little bit, maybe do less communicating in the psychic realm, especially when you realize that people are actually receiving those messages you're sending and you may not have wanted that or may not have realized that or may um, change your mind about what you're sending out in the world if you realize that it is actually being received, even if the person is not consciously aware that they're receiving the input. So, for telepathy to work well, we need to eliminate a lot of the noise, and I don't mean filter it out, because when you filter out the noise, you filter out the input that you're wanting. So, to filter out is to prevent your own um, telepathic skill. And you remove the filters, become more aware of that, you can make wiser choices about what it is that you're communicating and who it is you receive communication from and how seriously you take that communication. So if you're receiving a lot of communication telepathically that is being sent without any awareness attached, it's generally a lot of noise. It's not usually particularly truthful or particularly important or particularly worthwhile. It's more like static. Uh, it's more like trivia. It's more like uh, all the other noise you're already getting from plenty of other sources. When people engage with the psychic realm in a more aware and skillful way, they can be more um, selective about what they are sending and receiving. So being selective is not the same as filtering out the noise. It's an important distinction because filtering out the noise will lead you away from your goal if you want to become more telepathic. And being more selective will bring you more towards your goal. Just because someone has skill in the psychic realm doesn't mean that they are ethical or wise or uh, transmitting anything worthwhile. It just means they have skill in the psychic realm. So, uh, some people are very, very manipulative in the psychic realm if they have a little bit of skill because there is this notion that there are no ethics in the psychic realm, which is terrifying. It creates a realm where psychic warfare is more par for the course than unusual. And people are constantly trying to manipulate each other and control each other and gain the upper hand over each other in the psychic realm and they don't even realize they're doing it. So trying to talk to them out loud about their behavior is unwise. <laughs> in case you've never tried it, don't bother. If you want to talk to someone about their psychic behavior, talk to them psychically. That's playing it where it lies. That would be more wise. So, most people, they're just psychic noise factories. They're like that cartoon character Pigpen, you know? Psychically, they're just like, they have poor boundaries. They're scattering stuff all over the place all the time. They don't know that they're doing it consciously. They don't realize they're affecting other people by creating a whole lot of mess wherever they go. This is common. This is um, more or less normal, if you like. So, um... It is wise to become aware of what you are doing and stop making that kind of mess and bring your chi in to what's called the lower dan tian. It's a basic qigong concept. You just gather your chi back and stop transmitting all this constant noise 
as a starting place. The less you are making noise, the less other people will make noise at you, to, a, to some extent at least. It's a, it's a great starting place. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Right, right. So don't be one of those people who is scattering uh, psychic chi everywhere or noise or communication all over the place all the time if you don't want to be swimming in that mess. So you bring in your consciousness, you stop trying to control everything around you, stop trying to meddle in other people's business. I know that's a tall order. <laughs> but when we do this, we then find we have a lot more of our own chi to work with and then we can make wise choices with that chi instead of just using it up randomly or on annoying or stupid pursuits that don't get us where we want to be, that work against our actual goals. Once our chi is staying in, staying with us, and we stop making a lot of psychic noise, we've already cleared out a lot of the mess just by working at our own end, and then we can more readily apply a selectivity to input as well as output. Uh, to only communicate something that is important to communicate, something that is important to communicate in that way, as opposed to, you know, an email, or verbally, or in a more subtle way than uh, through telepathy, which I'm not going to discuss at this time. So, these are just some basics, you know, how to approach the psychic realm with a little bit of ethics and skill. Now, it's my belief that there are the same ethics in the psychic realm as there are in any other realm, and we should behave accordingly. Um, I don't want to live in a psychic war, so this is one of my motives to talk about this subject at all. Um, there's tons of research that demonstrates the existence of telepathy and the psychic realm, so I am not setting about to prove the existence of these things. If people want to know, they can read the research. And if they don't want to read the research, then they can stick with their beliefs. I don't really care. I don't care if people believe in telepathy or not. I really couldn't care less. I just assume put the whole subject behind me if it were up to me. Um, but lots of people are confused. Lots of people want to know. So I hope this information is helpful. And I'm only talking about a great starting place. I'm not talking about what you do uh, when you become very skillful in this realm. That is a whole other subject and not something that I would share with just anyone. I would want them to be uh, established in their ethics and their basic skills before I would teach that information. So that's part of what I teach at the Colson College of Intuitive Medicine is uh, psychic self-defense, for example, help us solve problems that show up in the psychic realm. And these do affect us a lot. They affect us very much emotionally and they affect us very much physically. I've seen plenty of people who have severe physical symptoms that have been brought on by other people's uh, poor psychic behavior or their own uh, unethical psychic behavior, or usually some combination of the two. So this is not to be taken lightly, and that's why I teach that class, Psychic Self-Defense. I'm also developing an advanced course in psychic self-defense for people who have taken the first one and done some work with that. And uh, that's probably enough to say on the subject for now. Thank you for watching. Please visit my website at colshancollege.com. I will show you a visual of that in a moment. Uh, namaste, bitches.